All right, I'd like to call to order the April 17th, 2019 meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority. At this time, I'd like to open up public comment. Please wait to be recognized. And when you get up front here, please give us your name. Chef Johnny. Hi, everybody. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk. Um, so I've owned my business for about five years, and I would say that 8 plus percent of the meetings that I've gone to, whether it be a restaurant association meeting, chamber of commerce meetings, um, uh, almost every meeting I go to, the topic ends up coming around parking. I mean, it's like ad nauseum that you hear about the parking problem in Royal Oak. And, you know, as the parking structures have been built, um, you know, we've invested millions and millions of dollars in these parking structures and they're beautiful, tremendous assets. It's an incredible frustration to have a restaurant that's literally 150 steps from a brand new parking building over on Center Street. I'm looking out my front window at this parking structure and people are telling me there's no parking in Royal Oak. I mean, it really, it, it's frustrating, it's, it's angering because it's a, it, it's a real issue. Then last year, you know, we lost several businesses along Main Street. I mean, we lost uh, Andiamos, we lost Cadoba, we lost B-Spot Burger, we lost Blackfin, we lost uh, Cantina Diablo. I mean, I, I don't think I can recall them all. But we lost them in a very short period of time, and unfortunately, the PR, particularly with Andiamos, was just really, really a, a shot upside the head for us. You know, everybody has seen that. And then even when, you know, Sam sold Beirut Palace, he's on TV saying he's leaving Royal Oak because of parking. Well, we've got now, uh, you know, a new parking structure opening up. Another millions and millions and millions of dollars. And we've got lots and lots of parking. But the greater Detroit community does not know that we have that parking. And uh, I'm here really just to advocate, you know, for creating a, an event or events that will highlight to the community through the strongest PR channels possible via Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7, Cranes, Our Detroit, every PR channel possible that we get the message across. Um, I think, in my own opinion, the best way to do it is through an event or a series of events um, so that it doesn't come off as we're advertising parking, but we're advertising what a cool city we are and then just happen to have the event in the parking structure. Um, I think the timing is really incredibly poignant because right now, you know, Ferndale just shut down a parking lot to build a building. They just raised the prices. So we have a beautiful opportunity to get this monkey off our back and let it jump on their back because they're going through the same growing pains we went through. And, you know, when you spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on assets, obviously as business people we want to leverage those assets. It's not unreasonable to think if you spend that kind of money to put fifty or hundred thousand dollars into marketing those assets would be un disproportionate to the size of the investment. You're looking at less than one percent. So from a budgetary standpoint, I was really excited when there was an earmark for some funds uh, that went towards the publication of these assets. And I know that we're probably hitting some speed bumps on that. And I just would like to advocate to you guys to please uh, roll over those speed bumps. You know, let's check this box. Let's take this opportunity. Let's seize this moment. Let's get this parking issue off our back and take advantage of the assets we have and let Ferndale deal with this issue for the next five years. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Anybody else? Luigi. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Emily Dumas. I just wanted to introduce myself. I took over as a library director in March, um, so I wanted to uh, reach out and say hello, and also just say that I hope that the library and the DDA can work together. And if you need anything from us, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. If it's all right with you too, may I leave my business cards with you? Sure. All right, great. Thank you, Emily. Luigi. Good afternoon. Um, 
I wouldn't, I don't, I'm fortunate I'm not as politically correct as John. You know, I want to, I want to mention something about, first one, the sparking. Uh, for the last three, four months, I've been having different, I've been pretty much in every meeting of the Restaurant Association. I've been talking to Sean uh, for the last couple of months. And the parking situation, I've been in, I've been in this town f for 35 years, okay? It's just embarrassing the last two years how Royal Oak used to get great media and other men, municipalities used to be used to get bad media. How in the last two years did this whole thing change? One, for a lot of lot of reason, one of it is the parking. And I don't blame the city official. I don't blame the, the your this body. But I had, a, uh, you know, why we just don't do anything to let people know about this parking situation. Well, first of all, there's no parking situation in Royal Oak. I don't know who started this parking situation. When I talk with people, you know, first thing they say, well, you should talk to your friend. We all know who is my friend. I don't care about my friend. I mean, I've been talking to Sean for the last couple, couple of months. Why somebody don't take charge? Why we don't invite some media? And I even uh, would like to offer a lunch for the media or a dinner. Get a $50 bus and show the media around. It doesn't take a genius, as long as you know how to read a little bit, to go on any of those parking structures and see a many parking structure, we got, a many parking we got available, okay? I mean, any given day, there is a billion thousand and fifteen hundred parking spaces available. You know how I know? There's a sign in there, sir. 400 parking available, 300 parking available. At night time, it's the same thing. Is any one of you guys ever take time to go over the, to really look at much? There's never out of three parking structure, I never saw one, they say, folk to capacity. You guys ever see any of those three booked? So, DDA, okay? This body wouldn't be over here if it wouldn't be for people like some of you guys, Gary and Tony, me. We are the true stakeholder on this downtown. I heard the mayor saying, well, my people who elect me. The people who elect anyone on the city council they got elected from people who came to Royal Oak because of downtown. I mean, that's the real, I mean, I guess, uh, except Beaumont Hospital, we don't have, we do not have any other industry. So downtown is the hard, the downtown Royal Oak is what made Royal Oak. And I feel like this body, City Hall, they're not doing anything to help downtown as much as downtown help the city, okay? We have to get some media. We let the media, we gotta let the media know the parking situation is a fake news, okay? Today, Stefan is coming in with some promotion. Nice that she's doing a great job on. It's just, as Elton John would have said, it's blowing in the wind. You know, you got a little candle, they will blow out of the, the wind in the next, but you know. We need to let people know, we have to get some really advertisement. I mean, when you listen, when I listen I don't listen to music. I listen to WJR and WWJ. They're talking about the DDA in Rochester. They talk about the DDA in Ferndale. I never heard any of the media say the DDA in Royal Oak.
Okay. We should, I think, and I wasn't, I wasn't the other side for many years. I think right now, guys, I think Royal Oak, downtown really needed some help. You can ask any businessman, oh, you got some of you right now. Business is down, okay? Business is down not because of the parking. Business is down because the media talk bad about us, okay? I was talking with Gary not too long ago. I understand you, we got some budget, finally. We got some media coverage going. But on top of that, I think we need some true, true promotion, okay? Not this um, one day promotion in and out, okay? We need some promotion that so we, the whole city is in. Uh, can you kind of wrap it? Okay. We need some promotion that the whole city can, in, can get involved, okay? And I hope we will get some true advertising agent, agents who could come up with some real promotion one every four months, one every five months. Anyhow, I know I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you, Luigi. Anybody else? Liz? Hi. Um, I'm Liz Morton. I live here in Royal Oak, and I'm also associated with Lily Seafood. And I'm also on the Royal Oak Restaurant, Royal Oak Restaurant Association Board, so I'm speaking on their behalf today. Um, and for the last two years as a board, we've been um, trying to gather ideas and concepts to highlight uh, more of the restaurants and um, you know, and which we all want to do, and as well as introducing the community to the fact that we are a food destination. So we su strongly suggest that the DDA help um, fund the SAM management um, restaurant, sorry, the Royal Oak Dining Series uh, proposal. Um, I know that there's a lot of interest for involvement for the restaurants and the idea of a year long. Um, series of events creating buzz and foot traffic in and around the downtown is exactly what we are hoping for. So I already have 11 restaurants committed to it. So I don't know if anybody wants this or you do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? George, nothing. Oh, okay. I right, see nobody else. I'm going to close public comment and bring it back here and move on to number three, the approval of the meeting minutes from the, our March 20th meeting. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the minutes. Moved by Director Krieger. A second. Second by Director Sophia. <coughs> Any discussion? So you're going to call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Monthly expense items, these are just for information. If you have any questions, now's the time to bring them forward. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? No. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm trying to move this meeting along here. <laughs> any questions before I move this? No. Okay, I'm going to move this along then. Uh, or five, approval of media buys contracts. I think that's probably Sean. As the DDA can see in the, uh, the attachment there, uh, last month the, uh, the DDA approved a budget for our uh, media buys to uh, promote the Factory Detroit advertisements uh, promoting downtown Royal Oak and all of its assets and features. And that amount was about $179,600 uh, as the line item in, uh, in the budget. Um, this spring, I've been talking to a number of companies, uh, including WDIV, Comcast, Outfront Media that does billboards, uh, Imagine Theater, AMC, um, as well as uh, Royal Oak Today and the Metro Times. Um, and we've put together a, uh, a media plan that will use utilize approximately $177,735 in media buys to circulate those ads. And uh, as you can see in the attachments, um, our, uh, all of the, uh, the attached quotes, uh, the time frames of when those ads will air on places like uh, WDIV, um, 
the frequency of the ads in MJR theaters, Imagine theaters, you'll see that we have seven billboards in the I-75 corridor and the 696 corridor uh, that will circulate uh, all of those billboard ads that we had created. Um, and I'll just remind the board that we had well over 100 separate assets that were created by Factory Detroit that emphasize downtown Royal Oak as a shopping destination, dining destination, nightlife, entertainment, um, you know, salons, personal care. Parking. Parking. Yes, we also had several parking uh, PR graphics that were, that were made that we can use at strategic times when appropriate, that we can uh, circulate in those billboards. Uh, we can put those on social media as well. Um, so we have a lot of material that we can hit the ground running in, uh, on July 1st. So, so there, there is, we've already created stuff that we can use what, to, what, if we launch a, a PR program to present, you know, that, that, and I agree with everything that was said by Luigi and Johnny here that, you know, yeah. I've said for a long time, we don't have a parking issue. For some people, it's a convenience issue because they're used to surface lots. There's more spaces, even, even before the new deck opens, we have more spaces than I've seen in the 14 years that I've been here that are available on a daily and nightly basis. In, in the grand scheme of, of the marketing campaign that we did, there is some parking in there. I don't think it's enough for what you want to address. Okay, so we so, so we can, more. but we can, yes. when, when we settle in and get, get a quote-unquote PR person and we can dovetail into, into what you guys have already done, and there's, there's room in this, and even if we have to add on. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Director Spy. Uh, I, I just have two quick questions. I, I'm not sure it's fair for Sean because I don't remember his involvement last year, but maybe Gary can address it. Um, so this this budget and what's in this budget, is it significantly different than what we did last year? Is there yes. new programs, new... We, I, we, <laughs> Sean did all the work. i got to give him the credit. Well, I didn't know how much he knew about last year. Because <laughs> not, not a lot. It, it, uh, last year was uh, we didn't have a lot of control of where this stuff went. We had some, but not not all. Sean can probably speak better to this than I can. Um, I think last year, well, the current fiscal year that we're presently in is what that was budgeted for. I, I think that was a little over sixty thousand dollars, if memory serves correctly. Um, the television buys were for a short period of time on Fox Two in the morning. Um, now, this media buy is significantly different. A, there's significantly more resources dedicated to it, and it conforms to uh, the media buy strategy that was created by Factory Detroit, which is the firm that created the ads. And just to make sure that I had the endorsement of Factory Detroit uh, on this plan, I sat down with them last week and went over all of these uh, these options with them as well. And, and I got their blessing on this too, that that indeed it, it does conform to, to what they had in mind. Because they, they specifically designed every ad to reach a certain audience. And when you're airing all of your commercials on a Monday morning on Fox 2, you're only reaching a certain segment. Not all of them would be the intended audience for that. For, for example, um, Game Day, the Game Day commercial, will be aired on the Sports Channel on Comcast, which makes sense. It's just one. It's more right. targeted. For instance, the, the happy hour uh, ads are intended to specifically air on from Tuesday through Thursday in the afternoons. Um, you know, people aren't really thinking about happy hour on a Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. I so. don't know about that. <laughs> well, um, hmm, maybe we can get them some help. I don't know. Um, but any other questions? Uh, I, I think you answered my second question. In fact, so Federal Detroit's been extremely heavily involved in this, and they'll, will they be on board with us through this whole process? Or I don't know that that's necessary anymore. Uh, that, I, I'm not sure either. That's why I just was... I, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't be, but I, I think what I think what I think what's right. happened is 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 the issue last time was the placement. Okay, so we have an we have a I'm not saying an infinite amount of assets, but we have more assets than we have money to, to do things with. Right. So um, Mr. Lance at, at Factory was pretty clear she, he wasn't very happy with how we use those in this fiscal year, and that's why you know we did our due diligence. He's gone and. She, and ran this by him. Uh, he's made it clear to me on a number of occasions that, you know, um, Mr. Lance said he thought, you know, we should do this. And I think uh, Sean's done his due diligence. 
I'll, I'll just add that Factory Detroit has made it clear that they are <coughs> more than accessible during during this time too. Um, you know, they've indicated to me that because they are a downtown Royal Oak company, they they want to make sure that this gets you know executed well, and you know they said that they would make themselves available to assist us in any way possible. So, thank you. So there is a resolution here. Someone would like to be so bold. I'll move to approve. Moved by Director Riley. Second. Second by Director Baglio. Any other questions? We have comments. One quick question for Sean. So I know I know nothing about media buying and whatnot. <clears throat> is, is, does this feel like a like the, the right amount? Should, I mean, I'm just curious. Is this a yes? This is exactly what we should be doing. Or are you going? Boy, I wish we had an extra twenty grand. It'd be even better. Something. I'm just. I don't know enough about this, so. Um, I would say after talking with a number of the uh, representatives from those companies that advertise through those, you know, that sell advertising through those platforms, mm -hmm. um, and working with them on, you know, best practices and everything, I'm, I'm confident that this would be a significant improvement over okay. the media placements from last year. So um, I, th and I made it very clear to them. In fact, I sent several proposals back to them to rework them and even have them customized to fit the strategy that was designed for this. So, um, you know, I think we should be monitoring the performance of this very closely, and uh, we do have the ability to make adjustments as needed. Okay. Um, but at, as it stands right now, I'm very confident that it's going to make a significant impact. And, and, and that being said, I think that the, the, what what we did last year sort of laid the groundwork because this piggybacks on top of that. I mean, that's still in a lot of the viewers, a lot of the listeners, a lot of the drivers, whatever, th that campaign still resonates. This, I think, pounds at home. Okay. Dr. Johnson? Sean, could you comment and address the, the issue of how much you're putting into more traditional types of advertising and how much you're putting into social media? Could I comment on that? Um, by traditional media outlets, do you mean? Like WDIV, right. Comcast, <laughs> billboards, and theater. The better. Most of it's going to traditional. Well, this amount going into social media uh, is merely for yeah. boosting posts. Um, this is a significant improvement over what we were doing in previous uh, fiscal years. Uh, last fiscal year, we were just putting about $100 a month towards boosting posts. Um, this would give us more than that, this would give us 2.5 times that almost, or twice that almost, in terms of create the, just the mere creation of ads. This doesn't. This budget doesn't include the boosting of posts, so that is a separate line item that's in the the promotions or consumer marketing budget. That would be for uh, social media management. Um, you know, boosting everyday posts. This is specifically to circulate the factory ads, uh, the, so those static assets that were created. Uh, for for use on digital platforms. So to answer your question, this isn't the entirety of our activity on social media. Sean, this this starts in July. This campaign, July first. Are we doing anything currently? We are. Um, that is actually in my report for April through June. The media buyer that we are currently contracted with is uh, is doing billboards, social media, and there's one other item I think was I think was the Metro Times. Okay. Point. And that's that's our April through June, which is light in my opinion. This, when this starts, it's a completely new budget cycle starting on July 1st, so this will have a, a much heavier impact. And uh, we've planned it out where it's gonna be heavy in July, it's gonna lighten up a little bit in August because we already have Dream Cruise and we have Arts, Beats and Eats, so you know, I, don't, I think there's enough media attention out for it during that time, so the money we would typically allocate for August, we would shift over for, for uh, September through December, it's more of like a heavier push. Uh, lighten up a little bit, but still be present. Um, January through March to kind of mirror consumer spending. And then in, from April to June, we pick back up again. So. Nice. And, and is there, this is a lot of money, uh, it seems. Is there an opportunity to, for like WDIV to get them to come out and maybe do some stories, kind of like Luigi was saying, get some 
Absolutely. Um, I had a long conversation with the representative from WDIV. Uh, once per month, we would have the ability to go live on the air and promote whatever we'd like to promote for that period of time. We'd have to clear it with their producers, of course. Um, we can, he also left the door open to, uh, you know, have some, some other media presence at some of our events and so on and so forth. So he's, he's more than willing to work with us to have additional media coverage as bonus, bonus items as part of this media buy. Nice, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I do have a motion, anybody else? You know, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, discussion of the Second Street improvements. No, you skip six. Oh, I'm sorry. God, what am I doing today? You can jump there if you want. But... No. Let's go to the free parking. Um, I'll touch on the, the free parking uh, for the new 11 mile deck. One of the thoughts that was going around internally was whether or not uh, that was something that the DDA would be willing to do would be to fund that as the city can't give away parking for free under some of the evidence on the revenue bond. Uh, the question was, did the DDA want to cover those costs for a week or some period of time? The email that you've received or that I copied in, um, Mr. Rassel estimated that that might be about 10,000 bucks for the week. Uh, so that was really the simple question was, did the DDA want to promote uh, the opening of the deck through covering the costs of parking for a week? But just piggybacking on the discussion we just had, um, one, I think it's a great idea, and I think it would be even better if we do it in conjunction with some type of a, a PR type release where we say, hey, the new deck is open, how many spaces there are on top of our already how many spaces we have available, right, right, right. and literally get out there, start talking about the number of spaces we have, and, and, and to celebrate the opening of the brand new 565 spot deck, you know, piggybacking on top of the 560 spot deck we opened two years ago or whatever it is, we're going to offer free parking to everybody for a, for a week, week. And, and we should pay for, a, if, and I know it's a little cheesy, but put a banner up, you know, put a banner up on top of the deck. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever. We got people we can go to, go to Rocket Printing, I don't care, and print something off. Free parking all, you know, from this date to this date. I don't think it's cheesy. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. You know? but, 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 but if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Not just offer it and send it out in, uh, in a real email. email. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's blast it. Let's get it out there. Okay. Do we have the... the a close time frame on this, or um, we, we June first? Yeah, you know, a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be pretty close to June first. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. But um, unless the weather goes bad and they got to stop pouring concrete or something. But I mean, we can we get a release together, or we get it out to get out to Crane, we get out to two, four, and seven. We make a few phone calls. I think that's one thing. If you want to do it, I would need a resolution to. Yeah. Yeah. Approve covering a dollar amount, uh, say ten thousand bucks or fifteen thousand for the new deck. I assume you're not giving it freeway on all the decks, just the new one. Right. Um, and uh, we take it out of the uh, operating fund. Well, what if we? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So, what event do we have that weekend that we're giving away free parking? We would we would event every weekend in June. Do you know what it is? In June? Was it June 1st you wanted free parking that week? Or was it June 7th, 8th? That we, are you talking about what we traditionally did? Or well, I say for proposed? a week you want free parking, correct? Is that what the proposal is? Yes. So we have an event every weekend in June. When we went through the calendar, I remember there was so the fire, something going on every weekend. The fire and uh, that's early. It wasn't the, the, the rock and ride, carnival, and pop crawl, crawl. So we're giving away free parking. I want to, I'm curious which weekend that is. For Where, how does this fall? We're, we're, we're going to have to probably do that in mid May, determine what week it is. Uh, I can't tell you for sure. It's the first week, June right. 1st. Might get pushed back. We've been telling everybody June this deck's going to open. Um, it should happen. be substantially completed yeah. by then. Um, but I think by the mid May, we'll know. Sure. And, 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 and you know what? Even if it's not exactly when the deck opens, we just say, hey, grand opening of the deck is this week, and we say when it is, 
Um, Lori, just just to fire the, the end of that week is the um, um, art art of fire is uh, the eighth and ninth. That would be the if it was that week. Right. Do we should we add something in as well for for promotion yes. and for promotional materials yes. into this yes. mm -hmm. into the ten thousand? Yeah. So uh, I'd like to add one more thing to it. Is I'd like to to add Saturday mornings at least up till about three o'clock through the entire month. Because of the market? Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Great Absolutely. idea. So maybe we do 20. Because we need to we need to pick up those Saturdays. We need you just, you just need a we need a motion. But we need a, we need a dollar amount not to exceed. How about well, Craig? Yep. Well, no, but we're adding a We're really going to be just using um, a, an estimate He here. said just in the morning. Don, Don yeah. Don, just in the morning. But, but, but then, but just then, targeting market hours. But, yeah. but then we, we, we okay, so, so this is for the week, right? So let's just say that, let's just say that, well, all right, maybe it's like 25 grand. 20. Right. 20. Not to exceed right. 20. <clears throat> that's that sound right? Traffic C20 that covers well, yeah. that covers parking for the week, the Saturday parkings, <laughs> and and pr production of whatever Some we want to put a motion. If we have to adjust it, we can. Yeah, and, and I think we're just generating some dollars. I think from from the promotional standpoint, from the PR standpoint, I think we just we're going to do that through releases and, and yeah, contests. Yeah, can... How would that be done, Sean? Would that be, would that be part of your money you already have for mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. or just on top of all that? Um, I'd probably request additional for that. Okay. Um, and again, all of the budget items that would be, you know, that we've already approved would begin July 1st. If you wanted to do it for June, you'd probably want to so approve. This is on top of that. Yeah, so, so this would, that would be this fiscal year, so you'd probably want to approve a separate amount for what, that. What would you foresee needing to properly promote the parking garage when it's opened? On social media? Uh, however, I mean, again, that's not my world. <laughs> How big of a banner ban do you ban want? This guy. Big. Biggest guy. Big. Yeah. I mean, I mean, big. It'd be hard for me to say without getting a formal quote. Okay. Um, I could talk to Rocket or something like yeah. that to see Make the, point. the I mean, one that would be visible at least. Yeah. You know, on the side. You, you, so. you, you got the best advertising space and around. And you probably yeah. want more than one, too, because you yeah. probably want to put one on the side. At least two or two or even right. three. So. You probably want one facing Main Street, one facing North. Well, yes. what we could do is propose a not to exceed amount. Yeah, exactly. You're going to kill me. <laughs> oh, like, no, we're on TV. Wait, wait. <laughs> Going for another Christmas tree. People at home would be very happy. My understanding is technically they're, they're not showing this live so, right now. Okay. My understanding is right, this. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some hand in editing? I hate those. <laughs> um, my understanding of this is we're going to be giving away free parking in the center street structure. For no, no, the new structure. The new structure. Just the new structure. Okay. Based on what we heard at um, opening comment, why not get free parking in all the structures? I think because of parking passes, people have already paid for parking. It's totally up to you guys. I mean, if you're going to make a statement, that's a statement. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, John, Director John, Johnson. John's we should have talked about this before the meeting. Ha having worked in government, I just know that if you just have free parking in one and somebody goes to a structure that doesn't have free parking and they see that they have to pay, it's going to get on social media that indeed there isn't free parking in the structure and then I'm going to have to chase rumors around. So if you're going to have parking free in the structures, you might as well do Additionally, all. my first thought was all of the employees in Royal Oak are going to get wind of this and they're the ones that are going to go to the structure. It's not going to make a difference. I'm minute. just throwing it out. There. <laughs> but you know, that's a good idea. I, I, I think you're I think right. It's a great right. idea. You're right. You're right. It isn't. But Get if we're going to employees off the streets, <laughs> but we not necessarily do it for an entire week, but just do it for a weekend. And look, I agree with everything that was said here earlier today. And we keep on getting one black eye after the next on something that doesn't exist. And this, I think, it's a great statement. All right, so I'm going to just throw some numbers out, and Director Johnson, you're the math whiz. Okay. <laughs> so it's not calculating the range. That's right. So we got, we're, we're, look, we're guessing around 10K for this new garage for a week. We got numbers here. This says 15, but I think there's actually that's center. Yeah, that's center, but there's actually really eight days here that's on that's on this uh, document here. These guys, Sundays are free. Yeah, Sundays are free. So in Lafayette, um, I guess you would probably look at 
more like this structure, I would imagine. So we're talking possibly in just parking anywhere from 35 to 40 thousand is my my math. I think that would be safe. I can't imagine that it would be higher. Center Street, we've got more spaces just, than anywhere just else. It, and you, you got to remember that the cars are, are going to get spread out some. I mean, I'd like to think that this is bringing more people in, but but but. It might not be, I mean, from a general standpoint, it's just cars fighting the closer vicinity, so. And really then, we all, I mean, I'm, I'm missing a deck too. The, the six and a half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think you're probably safe to be be talking about 40 or 45,000 in just the parking. We got and then whatever we're, we want to spend to promote this. Well, I would think that. I would think from a banner standpoint, I think you just go with the new garage since it's a new one. Oh, I mean. Yeah. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, I think I think I that's. Think so. I mean, it, it, it's got good visibility. It, it's high enough. It's got good visibility from 11 miles. It's got good visibility from Maine, but it says all decks. Grand opening that you know, all decks. That and, and you know what? Because of the enormity of it, I think from a PR standpoint, we'll get the bang for the buck on it. <laughs> that, that it's impossible to ignore. Honestly, I think that banners is not the way to go to promote this. We could put, do a banner, but the people that we want to reach are the people that don't come to Royal Oak, that I, don't. But, but this, so that, that, my question is, is this, can, is this something that, um, what's the name of the PR company that the city uses? Can they, can they market this for us? Uh, what is the name of that company? Franco? We use Joe. Franco, but Franco has a very specific assignment. Uh, they aren't just the PR company for the city. They are, they're right. specifically they related to, the, the, to the Civic Center project. Yeah. Which is kind of... You could probably... <laughs> kind of a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure that they would be willing to uh, come to some agreement with the DDA to do some additional work. Okay, but so we should include some dollars. It doesn't fall under what we've got. The under so the well, Sean, we're going to probably look for direction from you on this. Um, you know, we're probably looking for 40, 45,000 in parking costs. I would say 40, 45 grand in parking and probably at least another 10, 10. In, in promotional. Yeah, at least. Yeah, I don't know. So, not to exceed I would just, 55, I would just uh, round it to 60 J. I would just say that we have, I believe, 61 restaurants and about 52 retailers in downtown Royal Oak who I think we can also try to rely on to help get the word out to yep. you know, their right. customer base, too. I think it'd be, it'd be really Really important to try to engage all the business owners in downtown. So. But we also we also want them to be covered. We want the yeah. positive. Oh, coverage. absolutely. I think you, you'd want to do a release and you'd want to get yeah. business owners on board before you do the release too. Yeah. And then you know have everybody share on social media. Yeah. Have the news come out two four seven. Yeah. Try to get them all out. And, and Gary, the the, uh, the, the 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 banners aren't the batter in the cake, so to speak. It's just a little frosting. Gotcha. Sharing I mean, on the top. Yeah. But we, uh, my, we really need to get it to outline communities. Oh no no, there's no question. That's that that's a, that, that's after it got here, but it's just it's a little sizzle, I think. So I guess I'm looking for you to be real specific. I, I would also add that we currently have billboards purchased on I-75 corridor and 696 corridor, we can change out the creative on those billboards anytime we want for free. So if we even wanted billboards that said oh, free cool. parking and like okay. structures in downtown Royal Oak, we could easily swap those okay. into those ads when yeah. people are on their commute. So And, 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 and the, the one thing, I, I don't want us to lose, you know, I don't want us to bury the, bury, bury the headlines, so to speak, bury the lead. Um, the thing is that, that the new parking structure is open. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't want, in celebration of that, we're offering free parking everywhere, but we want to really get out there that this new structure with 565 spots is now open. Mm -hmm. okay, so we're, we're going to promote free parking in the structures. Yes. 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 Not surface lots. No, no, no. Not the streets. No, no, no. Structures. Structures. Matt's house. Yeah. Matt's All house. <laughs> I do have a question, though. Are you, this, Tim, where this recommendation kind of was just part of a... Well, it came up Overall in an internal discussion. staff meeting about okay. doing some sort of event or grand opening <coughs> for the structure. And I don't, I, I don't want to be like Gary and just throw a problem into the you well. Really do, you really know. <laughs> <laughs> do. But uh, is there any significant difference between doing uh, eight days straight or doing uh, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for a month? 
It, it makes no difference to, to me. It's just a matter of, of tracking in how you advertise it. I, uh, I guess I would look for input as to yeah. what the yeah. impact might, if the impact might be different or so forth. I, I guess procedurally, rather than trying to figure it out all today, if you simply made a motion to allocate $60,000 out of the fiscal, current fiscal year's operating fund, at your May meeting, Sean and I can bring back what the plan is and how we're going to do it. Sounds that would be May 15th. Uh, that'll be enough time ahead of time. We'll know then what week it'll be by the, the deck should be open. Um, and, and, and again, and again, it, 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 it doesn't have to be exactly the week the deck opens. I mean, no, but, 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 but it's like the grand opening of the deck, and we want to make sure that we do have enough time, which, which my guess is you really don't want to go PR on this thing until seven, ten days before it, <coughs> right? You don't really want to shoot your wad too early. No. So. I'm going to get Lori next, sorry. <laughs> I just want to make a motion. Oh, okay. So we can move this along yes. and then we can comment. So I want to make a motion to allocate $60,000 out of the general operating fund to go towards free parking and, and promotion for the new parking garage and not the other garages in town. And uh, I just expect that the details will come back to us to, to flush out. Okay, motion by Director Krieger. Second. Second by Director Baglio. Director London. I just want to comment what Mike said. Okay. The reason why I think you want to just do it on a weekend is because we want to attract business all week. The restaurants and shops and what? spas, salons, they want people. I don't disagree. I, that was why I was looking for the people a lot of hair salons. It'd be great those customers right. at hair salon would park there for two hours. We're in a deck. They realize it's only a block away from every hair salon. It's a block mm -hmm. away. And, 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 and I think I think it's, it's a lot easier to convey the message that it's these eight days or whatever. And I think, and I, and I think also that way, I agree with Director London that you're getting a whole array that way you're hitting everybody across mm -hmm. the board so everybody gets a little piece of the uh, of the candy well, one last thing um, I'm gonna support the motion um, I'd just like to add in in terms of uh, what Director Krieger said in terms of uh, having the details brought back to us at the main meeting I'd like to see included in those details is what your plan is to make this promotion happen not only the financial end of it but where where you think we're going to be spending our money and, and mm -hmm. certainly yeah. hitting the best Bring back a plan. i wanted yeah. to also add that um i can take that would give me enough time to take it to a stakeholders meeting and if i advertise that this it will be an item that will be discussed i could probably get a lot of feedback that would be helpful on how the business owners feel that it should be distributed whether or not they would feel that it would serve their purposes better on a weekend or for one straight week you know so I'd, I'd like to get some feedback from that before you know a firm decision were made so if we talk about it on May 15th then that would be Perfect. ample time to, to bounce it off the community All right, thank, thank you, you. Anybody else? seeing none I'll call for the vote all those in favor aye, aye. those opposed motion carries now, I'm going to take it nice and slow. Uh, number seven, Second Street Improvements. Um, what I attached in the, to the agenda is simply a, a drawing of uh, Second Street from Maine to uh, the alley and the new parking deck entrance. Um, the reason I brought this in front of you is uh, what's planned for the portion from the alley into the deck or north of the Henry Ford building is um, just standard concrete. Uh, so the question I had was, is the DDA comfortable with that plan or did you want to spend some revenue on putting in similar stamped colored material um, for similar to what's in the alleys um, or not? Um, that area will probably not get finished because the Henry Ford building is going to be using it until probably April of 2020. Um, um, so we've got some time, uh, but they are working on their final uh, engineered drawings of it. We were going to change it. Now is a good time to change it and make that allocation. The map I handed out today, it's basically the area highlighted in blue. Um, oh, okay. Where am I? 
goes from the west side of the alley on 2nd Street into the entrance. This is around the alley. Just so you know what's shown on here is the pink portion is all the area that uh, the Henry Ford Bogey uh, developer is responsible for taking care of. Yeah, of course. The orange area on north of 2nd is part of the parking deck that Colasani's putting in. You've got the alley in the pink area though, right? Yeah, the alley's in the orange. Um, they've already done that. The gray area to the east side is just not included, but it's shown because that's where they have some of their construction uh, fencing around. So it's it's there, but they're not doing any work in that area. It's going to be part of the park. Uh, and then the uh, pink is streetscape work that uh, I know the DDA's talked about potentially funding. Um, I'm not asking for your direction on that at this point. It's just the blue area. So, so this basically is for for a lot of people. This will be the lead into the park. This is going to be in between the two buildings, leading up to the park. So, so currently, if you're in the blue area, then you're going underneath. Is that I think there's a is that a cross like a bridge going across? No bridge anymore. No bridge anymore. Okay. Well, okay. Well, there's some more, there's some landscaping there. Then you're into the park. Yep. So basically, I just wanted to know whether you wanted to look at uh, additional treatment there. If you do, I'll have, I'll get with uh, Mike Limeweber from Boji's group and have Noah and Fraus estimate the cost of doing a similar design and then bring that back to you next month. Tim, just a quick question. Uh, is this a, as wide as the alley, a little wider than the alley? Um, I mean, it's definitely shorter than a block. It, well, the width of it from property line to property line is a little over 65 feet. Okay. Um, 20 yards. So the that's wider than the alley. I don't have a dimension on here, but okay. I think it is wider than the alley. It's wider than the alley, but shorter than a block. Yeah. Okay. So we can figure it's about the same cost, the square foot, if we're going to square foot it as, as a block <laughs> in the alley. Yeah. Okay. We can get prior numbers, but. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'll, I don't need them. Motion. No, just I make one. if it all possible, Tim. If 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 the information could be available for the next infrastructure committee meeting prior to coming back to the DDA, if it's possible. If not, I understand. Yeah, there's a time for I get that. Yeah, I'm not going to be the one generating it. So right, uh, exactly. I, 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 I know you don't have control over that. Do that in ten minutes. <laughs> over no, um, you can do that then I think we would have the ability to ask maybe a couple more questions, and so if it can be done. <laughs> Okay. Any other comments, questions oh. regarding this item? Okay. All right. On to number eight. Eight A Consumer Marketing Committee. Gary, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Sean. Yeah, there, there is a memo attached to that that uh, came out of the committee that Sean drafted in regards to the committee's action from their meeting um, so I think Sean can walk through it real quick for you yeah I mean if I could just briefly summarize what's in it uh, uh, the consumer marketing committee at their most recent meeting uh, a couple Mondays ago uh, recommended um, that the DDA provide twenty three thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars to the Commission for the Arts uh, to fulfill their request uh, for funding for the summer concerts, their public piano project, and their marketing costs. Um, they'd also recommend that the Commission for the Arts uh, actually work with the Consumer Marketing Committee a lot more closely in the, in the coming months, uh, probably in October again, to, to plan out the future year's summer concert series, which is, I think, a very a much needed thing that needs to happen, especially since there's considerable overlap with activities. Um, the committee recommended against funding the Royal Oak Dining Series, which came before the committee. That request was $17,500. Um, they also decided to uh, terminate planning for the parking garage concert event, uh, for which they had previously allocated $90,000 for the 2019-2020 budget. Um, Motor City Pride, the board decided not to relocate to Royal Oak um, 
for which the committee had also allocated $35,000 to assist with expenses for the event. Um, oh, I see. There's a few other things that the committee talked about. Um, one being a breast cancer awareness uh, month-long event in October uh, that is still ongoing in terms of planning. Uh, so there's nothing you know, to take before the board at this point for any action. Uh, likewise, a live music promotion request for downtown as well, which is still being, which is still in development, I guess, uh, in the at the committee stage. So uh, that concludes that report. Just to expound on a couple of those items, the. Um, we had a pretty extensive conversation with the Commission for the Arts regarding some of their events and um, you know what they do and made some pretty good arm twisting um, asks that they expound upon is especially in terms of the piano um, it, the pianos around town and the summer concert series um, we talked about adding food options um, namely food trucks to that event to draw more people because food trucks are an attra attraction. Additionally, um, I think Gasoline Alley has a licensed area where they serve alcohol during the events and they've noticed that that area seems to get very, very, very crowded. So that tells you that we need to ex expand that, that offering to draw more people to that event as well. So they're looking into that. Um, so they're going to, they've got the money now, they're going to step it up and the next year we'll just, we'll review it again. In terms of Motor City Pride, they um, have gotten permission to stay in Detroit. So that's the reason they're not um, moving to Royal Oak. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Dr. Spine. So the Arts Commission, was, are there any other changes to the concert series? Did major changes that were brought up at the meeting? We I did mean, bring, uh, unfortunately, this request came in late, and as with a lot of the requests that we're getting, and their, their lineup this year has already been set. Um, we did have some pretty candid conversations with them. I can tell you that it was, it was at, at, um, at some points uncomfortable. Would you, would you agree? Um, but I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. But in terms of the lineup, it is uh, it's already been set for this year. The location is the same. The setup's the same. I believe so. They're yes. not. We there was some talk last year about moving it, moving it around the city. We met, we did discuss maybe flipping the stage around to the other area so it doesn't look like it's blocking off 4th Street. Um, I don't know that they settled on anything. It was the audio problem, the chords. Yeah, there, that's what it is. There, there's uh, electrical issues, and that's why the stage is where it's at. <clears throat> okay. okay. Um. I guess we, you know, now that we've got this relationship established, we can continue to talk about these things because I didn't know those were issues. Okay. <clears throat> All right, anything else? Well, we do need a motion. The committee is recommending two different things, so I think you should separate them or deal with what, what, what are the What are the two motions? What are the two well, the one is the recommending uh, funding for the Commission for the Arts and the 23,451. Uh, if you support that recommendation, you'd need a motion to approve it. Uh, I would ask that it, that either be done as uh, taking the money out of what's already funded uh, for next year or whether you're adding that to the budget. Just I need clarity there. Um, whether you want to take it out of the 35000 for Motor City Pride, because uh, that's not going to happen. Um, so as part of your motion, if you're going to fund fund it, I would like clarity on whether it's an add-on to that total budget or coming out of but what's already been out. Gary, did they say when they needed the money? Or Don, do you know? or Do they need it before uh, June 30th? They didn't say. I would assume it would be for... The concert doesn't start, the series doesn't no, start until no, July, so. I guess, you know, it doesn't matter either way, so. Uh, I'll make a motion that um, the DDA approve $23,451 coming from the 2000, the next fiscal budget. Um, 
taking it um, from the, what was allocated for Motor City Pride and awarding it to the Commission for the Arts. I second that. Okay, we got a motion by Director Baglio and a second by Director London. Has everybody got that and understand that? Mm -hmm. So that, that money is being taken out of next year's budget, 1920. Okay. 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I fully support this. I, I have one concern, and I don't know, I'm not sure who can answer this or how we would even address this, but um, again, I'm in favor of it, but there's some wording in here in this report, and I've gone through these numbers considerably, and I'm 99% I'm there, I'm okay with them. Um, my concern is, is uh, there's a line here in the, uh, uh, in the memo uh, that says, uh, basically says, funding is also being sought for a new program this year. The Royal Oak Writers and Music Series is a, and I quote, because this is where I'm having a problem, um, is a, quote, program currently in the planning phase. Um, and that's where I'm a little bit stuck with. Um, I know this is not a significant amount of money, but I, talked about that from a too. personal point of view, I have a concern about funding a program that doesn't even exist yet. Um, and I know that they're gonna try and create it, and I know that there's, there's a good faith thing here, and if everybody else is comfortable with it, I guess I could be comfortable with it too. I just, I, I, what are we funding? What is this, this is, the funding on it is $5,000, and that's entirely coming from the DDA. Um, I don't, and I don't have an answer, I don't have a good answer here. I don't know if this is something that can be put off till later, it can be pulled out and then put back in later, I don't know that. So I'm asking for a little bit of uh, guidance and see if anybody else maybe has a thought on it or something. Um, again, if everybody wants to take the good faith effort that it's going to happen, you know, maybe I can get on board with it. I don't. Do a friendly amendment to make that five thousand dollar line item uh, contingent on the approval of of more detailed project. Um, I, I, I again, I'm looking for input from everybody else. Uh, yeah. such a long Personally, I would just leave it in there. I think we're earmarking some dollars that you could come up with something is how I see it, unless I'm seeing it wrong. And if you don't come up with anything good, then I guess you don't spend it. Either way. Well, that, I guess that was another question, is, is if the program doesn't take place. Mm -hmm. Goes in Gary's pocket. <laughs> Generally speaking, uh, you you do things as a reimbursement, meaning if the event doesn't occur, occur you're not going to give them any money. Right. Uh, you allocate it as part of a budget, and say it's there, but generally speaking you you provide your sponsorship dollars after the event occurred um, you normally don't get to critique the event in a great deal if you're just the sponsor if it's your event then obviously you get to approve it and all the nuts and bolts of it but if you're just the sponsor uh, you haven't generally done that so on these uh, in the past there's been a couple of occasions where they've come in terms of the summer concert series because they needed to pay someone up front you've allocated it up front but generally speaking uh, I don't cut a check to someone until the event's over with so then Tim would you be okay with not doing that friendly amendment leaving the money in there and maybe and I don't know if this is just an automatic thing or whether we have to put it into no, I, I think it's fine because all you're doing is budgeting for it at this point. Okay, so we're budgeting for it, but Saying what we really would there. like to see is an expenditure at the end of the event or something along that line. Yep, I can bring okay. it back. Then I'm, then I'm comfortable with it at this point then. Okay. <clears throat> so no need to change it. I would say the, the tenor of the conversation was that we need to elevate this program, especially the summer concert series, as Director Baglio mentioned, they were kind of far along this year already, so we couldn't really, you know, call audibles at this point. Um, 
we wanted to fund it because it's something good for the downtown hopefully with some um, different marketing strategy it'll be better received this year but going forward and and that's why we're going to have some discussions before they put everything in place because we want to agree that what they're proposing is going to be the, the best possible product for the money that that we're contributing good thank you anybody else <coughs> just one, one last thing i'm going to support it um the only thing I just am asking you guys, like the piano project, I mean, that thing's getting tired, man. I mean, do we have to give them money for that? I mean, those things look bad. By well, the the here's the, the, the thing. Um, it's not really getting tired. It's pretty amazing. If, if you're out in the community, like there's one in front of my store. Mm -hmm. At least five to seven times a week, somebody will come up and literally play a concert concerto on that piano. It's, it's amazing. So the suggestion was to create some sort of launch event with the pianos where the, this organization hires a bunch of piano players around town, maybe piggyback it off the patio opening event with the restaurant association and create a patios and piano event where there's a bunch of piano players playing music all over the city. Not too expensive, but we would give them a little bit of money out of this budget. And the same thing with taking them away. Right now, um, this piano project relies on a free agreement with a moving company, mm -hmm. and they're kind of at their beck and call. So if there's budget dollars allocated to it, it gives the, the committee a little bit more flexibility okay. to create events All right. around it. All right, cool. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, yep, I did. Sorry. Anybody else? Okay, so now we got a motion. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> All right, anything else? All right, the, the second one, you've got a recommendation not to fund the uh, uh, dining series, so uh, in the tune of, uh, I believe it was $17,900. Um, board will either need to follow the committee's uh, recommendation or take it different course of action. I'm going to make a motion that we uh, follow the committee's recommendations and uh, deny the funding for this event. Um, I second that. I got a motion to deny the request and I have a second. Director Bagley and Director London. Director Riley. Um, just in listening and thinking about things and, and, and looking through this, um, I I'm looking at, the, at this uh, dining series, and I'm, I'm wondering why we would move to deny this. Um, you've got a situation here that, that, that it seemed to me checks all the boxes of stuff we're looking for: um, events, positive promotion, um, not pub crawls, not you know bringing a bunch of quote-unquote drinking drunks into our city, running around town. And these are events that are, that are spread out that involve multiple establishments that would involve multiple establishments. I probably need some more clarification as to exactly what. And I don't see the negative of promoting our city and our dining in the city directly. Um, and when I look at, you know, some of the other stuff that, 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 that we support, not blindly, but, but very easily, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss as to why this was so easily turned down. In that, you know, I mean, if you listen to Luigi and you listen to Chef Johnny today, and they're talking about events that promote not only the city, but the parking availability. And they show off our dining establishments. And we hope that, 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 that there's a, 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 a spill off, a trickle down effect to retail. If nothing else, people are getting exposed to our city. And this in particular, in reading through this in, in, in the time that I had, it seems that this will bring in people that, that don't maybe, that aren't typically coming into the city. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing that's not a lot of money, but it's 
in it's comparison a to a lot that, that we deal with for nine events, oh. it's not a lot of money. In, 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 in comparison to, to what we normally do and what we need to put on events. <coughs> It's not a DDA event. It's not nothing that we're so, so you know that, that we're, we're we're helping to fund it, but we're not running it. And I just think I think it would be short-sighted to just simply deny this. I think Um I I looked really hard at this event and and. Um, I just want to, all I want to do is look at this event for, for its merits and, and what it is and what it brings to the city. Um, and I'm, I'm just seeing positive stuff here. Um, I, I won't, I, unless somebody can convince me differently, I'm, I'm not going to support the motion that's on the table right now. Um, I think these nine events that are being proposed is going to give us much more exposure than some of the other stuff that we do. I think it's going to give us much more marketing than some of the other stuff we do. Um, and, and as Director Yesbick said, we're hoping to see uh, some changes to the summer concert series. Um, I've been at the summer concert series. I've worked at the summer concert series. I've seen what exposure that has brought. I've seen how many people that has brought to the downtown. And then I turn around on the other side and I look at these nine events and I can, t I can pretty much guarantee that these nine events are gonna well outperform what we, the exposure and the customer base and the people that we bring downtown than the summer, than the summer concert series. So um, yes, it, it, you can say it's a lot of money or you can say it's not a lot of money, but we just approved 24 some thousand dollars for the summer concert series. I don't. I think this is. I look at this as marketing money well spent. I look at it. That's what I look at it as marketing money well spent. I like the idea that we have. Um, I, I like what the speakers have said today, and they seem to be on board and want to participate. And each one of them is going to market the city of Royal Oak as they go through through their through their social media status. And um, I see some of the names on here on this list. There are some new players in the game, some people that have not participated because they didn't like pub crawls or they didn't like certain events. And this one they seem to want to get on board with. So I, I for those reasons, unless somebody can convince me difference, I can't support the motion on the table. And then Director um, London. Yeah, I want to explain why uh, the, com the committee acted the way they did um, when this was presented to us. Um, when we got our agendas, there was no supporting documentation on the agenda, so we didn't know what this was going to be. I thought it was something completely different. So it just showed up at our meeting. There was nobody there to represent the event, to, to talk, talk about it. Um, and uh, it wasn't presented as a restaurant association meeting, so we didn't know, it was confusing. Um, since then, I've done some due diligence um, with different people around town, and I wanna highlight what Luigi said when he talked about these in and out events, which is what this is. Um, they, don't, they don't help the restaurants. Um, I, I appreciate the work that the Restaurant Association does. They do some good events. However, they've fallen into a very familiar pattern of lanyard events, which is where you get to buy a lanyard, you go into the venue, you get a little nosh, you get a little drink, and then you move on to the next one. Um, they do it with wine stroll, they do it with beer stroll, they do it with brunch bites, and now they're proposing taco taco, which is 
a taco and probably tequila. And Shops and Pops, which is something that we did six years ago with the restaurant or with, the, with the retailers, and it, it was a complete flop. I'm not saying that those will be a flop again, and I'm not completely against them. The, the way this was brought to us, there wasn't time to flesh it out, process it, and talk about these events. It was, I feel like the committee was blindsided. And then today, I've had a lot of discussion with a lot of you um, about this proposal, and I was prepared to just put the brakes on it and put it back to committee. Um, uh, and, and now I'm told that the promoter needs time to buy to get sponsors and it has to be voted on today to me that's a high pressure sale and that's why i'm saying no again i'd be willing to kick it back to committee in the time that i was told about the the high pressure sale and it had to be voted on today i called a couple of the restaurants that are on that list and they weren't really sure what they were voting <laughs> they do not like lanyard events they like the progressive dinner um ideas which are these again we can flush this out at committee and approve what we like and, 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 and massage it. We didn't have time to do that. Also, uh, during this meeting, which is being broadcast live on TV, one of the Restaurant Association board members texted me and said she had no idea that the Restaurant Association was even going to be making a presentation today and has not been asked to participate in these events. So <laughs> there's, it's, it's, something just doesn't sit well with me. So if for that reason, I can't, I, I can't support this today. Recollect Pigotailing what he said, um, Sam Marketing Event did not come to our meeting to discuss this, so we're just given this packet of paper. So that's not being fair to us to have not to have her as part of the conversation. She doesn't want to work with us. She quit this job and now she's coming back for the same type of job. In my store, my policy is I don't we hire an employee that was unhappy and quit the job and come back and hire them again. That's the first thing. The second thing, it's a ticketed event. So why can't this be self-funding? People are paying for the event. Why can't they work that into the cost? Third, it's not original. We've already been doing this. Um, one way to highlight the restaurants, they're not highlighting the restaurant, they're highlighting one morsel. They're not being encouraged to sit there and eat. Holiday Market, which is outside the DDA, they now have a um, Taster Society dinner. And we went to Luigi's, they went to Beast for 82, and had a five course wine pairing dinner where you talk to the chef, you talk to the owner. And that's cultivating culture in love for the restaurants from where I look. They're getting to eat the whole meal and get to know the restaurant, not just getting a bite. I haven't had anyone with a lanyard come into my store and say, oh, now I'm going to shop here because I had a bite of a taco or a bite of a brunch bite. It's, you're, not, you're bringing the same... I like to know how many people the tickets they sell. It's 200 You're spending $2,000 to bring in 200 people to downtown Royal Oak. That's a lot of money per person. I'm not, I'm not making the number up. I don't know how many tickets they're selling. But it was our thought, this is the Restaurant Association event. They should self-fund it. Maybe give them, kick them a little few dollars to get them going, but why are we fighting the entire event? Thirdly, um, piggybacking what Luigi said, I totally agree with him. It's just like blowing money in the wind. I'd rather put that money towards more PR for the restaurants. Let's do more advertising. Or more, or originally we heard, again, no one from the restaurant association came to our meeting, but they were putting on an RFP for a new, um, new person to head up their events. And then it seems like we were getting mixed messages. But I do think it should be self-supporting. I got director. Uh, again, I just want to, again, um, highlight that, that this just feels like a high, high pressure sale and I just feel like we need time to, to just massage it with all of the, the, the restaurant association board and and talk about some of these events and maybe get some prices on certain ones of them and, and knocking off some of the lanyard events or making or reformatting the lanyard event to make it something different. There's no there hasn't been any time to talk about any of this stuff. So that that's I just want to highlight that. Director's fine. I have to say this because I've said it so many times, but we're not, nobody's listening. And I've said it in front of the city commission and in front of city administration and at this table. We keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. This is not a restaurant association event. 
all those pub crawls that go on in the city of Royal Oak are not restaurant association events. Yes, they do a wine stroll. Yes, they do a beer stroll. All the rest of them are from outside vendors that come into City of Royal Oak and certain restaurants get involved. Certain restaurants don't get involved. You have an option whether you want to be a part or not be a part. So when we start lumping all these things in and throwing them on the back of the Restaurant Association, we're making a mistake and we're wrong. None of this is a Restaurant Association event. This is a, an event company coming in from the outside who has to now go around and sign up restaurants that may or may not want to participate. So when we talk, and we, we're all guilt, I think we're all guilty of it. And not only this body, but city government and everybody else. These are not restaurant association events. So, I, 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 and I'll, I'll keep repeating it if I have to, but that's just not the way that it is. That's not the structure of the way these things are. I just want to say one thing. We talked about the Arts Committee. Those are that was free. We're trying to track families at downtown Royal Oak, <coughs> and it's a free event. This is not a free event. This ticket that people are paying for. It. So we talked about their budget. Their budget is because they're all volunteers, and that's one thing we stressed in our meeting was everyone on that arts committee. They have a real job, and this is that was they're volunteering. Well, not volunteering, but they're working hard for the city for very little money. Uh, I got Yes, ma'am. I'm the biggest advocate of events downtown. I, I love events. I think it's our downtown is perfectly crafted to have uh, events, people walk around. I, I think to be fair that as, as Gary uh, said, there wasn't a lot of backup information when we talked about this. Um, I think at minimum, it, the, the ideas have to be more fully developed because, you know, is it just like a wine stroll? Is it too similar to some of the things we do already? Because even with the infamous bar crawls, some are successful and some, you know, 10 people show up and, and it loses some, you know, Royal Oak suffers, I think, the reputation because it has an event that's not successful. So the reason that we have to develop this any concept that we do, um, so we're all confident in it, is, is so we can avoid those situations where an event is a flop. We, we don't want to be associated with that. Um, the 17,500, it's, maybe it's a lot, maybe it's not, but where is it, is it going to alter marketing? Is it, where is it going? We don't know at this point. It, it just hasn't been developed enough. And I'll just, just, I, I agree with you, Director Sophia, about uh, it's not a restaurant associate event. But I don't care if the Restaurant Association has great event after great event after great event. I would approve them all. It's just, it, I don't think it matters as much where it comes from as what's the substance of the event. Is it going to help Royal Oak? So I just think for me, uh, and, and the feeling on the committee was, we, we just have to develop these ideas. I think, it, I think they do check a lot of the boxes. but. But we're not, it's just in pencil right now. We, we're not sure, we gotta make sure it's a marker and, and check all the boxes in, in marker. So I, I just think it's it just a little premature to, to approve it at this point. Uh, that was the bottom line for us. Is, 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 there, is there any way on this to, that we can buy more time and, and have it go back to the committee and, and flesh it out? See that I was gonna ask. I mean, is, is, is there, is it, even, I, I, even if it meant maybe losing a small piece of it, but saving the rest? I mean, yeah, if, if we um, are pushing it back, then we're going to lose some of the events for sure. Um, I th someone mentioned the next DDA board meeting was May 15th, so uh, having an event at the beginning of June, there's not enough time to pull something together in that time frame. So, go ahead. So, I, I mean, I was looking at the schedule, and that was going to be one of my questions was because to hear, you know, it, I, I totally get um, what everybody's been saying as far as if they're uneasy about making a decision, then you don't. Especially, you know, Absolutely. that's not as fiscally uh, not responsible. So when I looked at the date, it's like every 27th, I'm like, well, that's obviously going to slide, right? right. If, it, if it did go back to committee. And what about May? I mean, is there a way that it can go back, be vetted, 
you know get a everyone get a warm fuzzy on it and then c come back to us so then we can we can do something because director Safaya, you know made a good point obviously i'm not a restaurateur but when i hear a restaurateur say hey i like this i go okay good you know then i would assume that others would as well um so i'm just wondering is there a way to, to, to do something in may or let it slide or because if it's a month from now, I mean, it's no different than if it's in April or May, right? Because right now we're so close to April 27th. Anyway. So, but it just April 27th is an event that Stephanie does on her own. It's been happening for four years. It's okay. going to happen regardless oh, of okay. whether we are I thought that was part of this or not. The, so, no. um, the, the reason that I included in that, that, because I thought it would be a good kickoff to, to uh, brand this new dining series, because it already has a built-in database. It has uh, people that attend. So money is not needed for that, but it's also a marketing tool so that, you know, if, if things were approved, I can send out information and include that to people at that event. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, um. But, but to... Uh, just to, to also say, when I'm talking about pushing it back a month, if it's in May, um, doing an early June event, the taco event, is not, it's not feasible. Would you, would you consider, as a company, would you consider... Because of the timeline and sure. because of all the concerns that you're hearing here at the table, I mean, would you be would you consider cutting this back to a uh, a six event type of structure or a five whatever worked out within your time frame? Mm -hmm. would, would that be? Would you take that in consideration? Um, I would. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'll wait to see what everybody else has. Well, to say. And, 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 and uh, I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at the list here, and there's there's some names that don't that don't usually pop up when when we see the quote unquote lanyard events. Uh, Cafe Muse, Hopcat, Bigalore, mm -hmm. New Models, uh, Iron Horse, um, Mr. B's. I'm not sure whether whether he's in them or not. So there's, it's 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 not just the usuals. Um, I understand the committee's uh, point of view totally. Um, that, that, that at the time there may not have been a, a lot of detail. I, I personally, I'd like to salvage whatever we could out of this. I think there's a lot of merit in this. I'd love to try the taste tour. I'd love to try bubbles and bites. Director Bagley, I don't know if it's the simplest thing. We tried that before. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we tried. There's, there's, there's totally a lot of stuff that we tried event. before. Yeah. There, there's, there's a lot it's of things totally that we've done. I would done. be willing to Give me one second. There's a lot of things that we've done that aren't always successful. There's a lot of things that we've done that aren't appealing to everybody on the street. Okay, every decision that we make up here doesn't 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 please everybody. I mean, it'd be, it'd be wonderful if there were certain events that we could that would. But we made decisions today that I guarantee you, that people were were sore about or didn't like. Um, I think. I think that what we've talked about today, that we've got a lot of positive energy going, and, and I hate to be trite and cliche, but with regard to, to promoting our, our city and promoting our parking and doing things, and some of these events, I think, are the stuff that we want, that we, that we, that we want here. I, I agree with you. I agree that some of these events are things that they want. The progressive dinner is a great idea. It's been talked about quite for quite a while from other restaurants. Wait, 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 I'm, I'm not finished. I let you talk. I let you talk. <laughs> Um, uh, I would be willing to rescind my motion if we can put this back to committee and vet it the proper way. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Well, then you have to keep your motion so that it, because we either vote for it or against it, right? I think well, he's going to put it back to committee. Oh, he said he's yeah. willing to rescind his motion. Got it. Okay. I believe I have to ask Director London. And I guess I'm. Okay. Just for All right. So now there's no motion on the table. And do we need a motion to send it back to the committee? No. Just send it back. Okay. Is that the consensus here? I think so. Yeah. Are we done? Chance, chance. Right side of the table. What? That's the consensus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So this will go back to the committee. Thank you. Thanks. All right. What else we got to look at here? Gary, was there anything else? Uh, no, I think we touched on just about everything. Got the parking garage event that we did budget. 
recommending we not do it now. No. Okay. Oh. That's why I talk about the parking garage and why we do. We have to. Yeah. Can, real. can I just get some background on that because I I don't yeah. I don't know how that all came about or I mean not necessarily why it went away. There could be a million reasons why it went away. What was what? Who was doing the event? And okay, we had talked with oh. Julie about the, the idea came from factory um, while we were doing our marketing event and his idea was if you're going to address the parking issue in Royal Oak why not throw a big huge concert on top of the parking garage great idea right so we sat down with Julie and put together what would be a realistic budget on a big name band and you know equipment rental and how to do this the right way so, and that was the dollar amount that we came up with she researched a couple of bands um, some of them, can, you know, I liked and some Tony liked, and you can't really find the, the perfect band that's going to um, please everyone. Well, as these discussions went on, time got, we got closer and closer to the garage opening. Also, I don't know if anybody follows the, the rooms on Facebook and, and the different, and how parking is perceived in Royal Oak, but that tide seems to be turning a little bit, and the no parking issue seems to be, people are making kind of a joke out of it now that it's not, you know, the people that are claiming there's no parking, it, 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 the tide seems to be turning. So our thought was if we did this concert and it didn't do well, we might be igniting that perceived problem again. Um, plus the timing of planning an adequate event wasn't, just wasn't there. Plus we had a lot of music events in town. Yeah. And there, and we've got, Live music coming from uh, an, someone out. Uh, we got an, uh, the summer concert series. There's another music event. There was music events coming from everywhere. Carnival um, event has music, doesn't it? Um, there was just another. out of curiosity, who was was it? Julie that Julie. was going to do the event. Correct. Was would be the event promoter. Yes. Director. Yes. Okay. Also, um, Julie has been talking with a. Consumer Marketing Committee about doing a culinary event as well. Um, we haven't gotten a, a formal um, prom, uh, presentation from her, but that's another. There's a lot of events that are coming down the pike, um, and I believe that's in our budget already. Any other questions about? And I submit that what we came up with today as far as free parking for a week is a much better way I to agree with that to market the yeah. structures than, than a, a band a up band on top. It attracts only that band following, not everyone. That appeals to everybody. Mm -hmm. Free parking appeals to everybody. Okay. Anything else for Gary? Oh. No, we should we're done listening exactly. to Gary today. All right. uh, <laughs> these next two items, uh, neither committee had a, a meeting, so I don't know if there's anything either of the chairs want to put forward. Okay. All right, that being said, let's move on down to the uh, manager report. I'll just highlight a couple of the things that I think are the <clears throat> most important. Um, first, I just want to say that uh, Wednesday, May 1st at 5 p.m. at City Hall here, um, Main Street Oakland County will be giving a special presentation, uh, an introduction to the Main Street program um, for a lot of the board members who may have questions about the program or would like to know more about it. Uh, this event uh, is specifically for the DDA board members, uh, so we'll have... I I think about two or three Oakland County staff members here that will give uh, about, I think maybe a half hour presentation and we'll set aside some time for questions as well. Um, they'll also be going over the results of our evaluation that took place on February 12th, which is uh, part of being a member of the Main Street program is that a representative from the national organization comes in once a year and does uh, an evaluation on your downtown. So they'll be go going over the, uh, the results of that evaluation with the board as well. Um, I also just want to say that uh, a few weeks ago I had the privilege of attending the uh, National Main Street Conference in Seattle, and uh, I want to say a, a very pivotal thing came out of that. Uh, I, for the second time I saw a, uh, a, I guess he's a downtown advocate slash consultant speak. His name is John Shallard. He's nationally known uh, business, small business and downtown consultant. He's worked in over 
80 downtowns uh, and his whole philosophy is trying to consult with downtowns and work with downtown business owners uh, to really make their places destinations. So he even works with uh, small towns that, are, that have a population of 5,000 and he's able to, to work with them to turn them into destinations, regional destinations. So uh, I spoke with him a little bit after his presentation. He's a fantastic public speaker as well. Well, he called me this week and he said he's interested in coming to Royal Oak um, to do a, a one-day workshop. And Oakland County Main Street is interested in paying for it, covering the, the entirety of the cost. Uh, they said that they could find the money in their budget for that they would typically allocate for our annual technical assistance and our annual trainings. We would forego those things uh, in favor of bringing in John Schallert to give a presentation. Um, I have a couple of options that we could use as a venue still. Uh, I'd still like to vet a couple of options that might be good. But if we were able to do this, I think uh, we could get several hundred people to come in attendance. And I think uh, the Main Street programs of other communities in Oakland County would come far and wide to come and see him speak as well. So I think the mere fact of doing this would make Royal Oak a destination for that day as well. Uh, other communities would be coming to downtown Royal Oak to learn how to make their towns more competitive. I think that would be, that would definitely put us in a good light. Um, I think that would be good people are for us and I think it would be very beneficial and give a shot in the arm to a lot of our small business owners uh, you know who need uh, need some expert advice and some expert technical assistance too so um, I'd like to take this to uh, a relevant committee um, so I'll speak with Tim to see what the most appropriate committee to, would be to take this to I'm thinking potentially business marketing because it would have to do with retention and expansion of small businesses uh, but that I think was an exciting thing that happened this week um, Let's see if there's any other. Oh, uh, I will say in response to some of the, the public comment that we did have, uh, I, I just wanted to, to say that I have been working closely with the Business Marketing Committee. We, we have a, an RFP for a public relations firm that is now published. Uh, so we are taking uh, uh, proposals for a public relations firm at this time. The deadline is April 30th. Um, and then uh, after that time, we'll, the Business Marketing Committee will be going over those proposals that come in. Uh, I've already received a ton of interest from several firms, so that's very encouraging. Um, I think uh, if timing serves right, they'll likely begin, you know, in the next fiscal year in July. You can finish your thoughts. Oh, sorry. No, that, that's it. That was well, it. last year my staff and I attended some of the Main Street um, speaker events, mm -hmm. and we saw that um, educational offering this year. When does it get published? Like, how do I know what classes I can attend? So I don't have any news on when they're doing any um, trainings at the county campus yet. So I'm sure I'll probably hear something in later spring because if I remember, they did that over the summer last year. Um, so I'll be sure to send that out as soon as that information comes in. So. Uh, but I will say that after the session I saw with uh, Mr. Schaller, that, that that was probably the best presentation I've seen from any conference I've ever attended. So. I think they're all they're, they're great. Yeah, and this would be a day-long workshop, too. So. Dr. Baglia. i got to give Sean some kudos right now um, for two things. Uh, I remember him calling me after listening to Mr. Shallon's presentation, and his the excitement in his voice was immeasurable. So the fact that he's coming here yeah, is cool. a big deal. That's great. Um, I got to thank Sean for that, and also the amount of time, the tedious hours that he put into that marketing um, placement program. You can't see it on the paper, but he really put a lot of time and effort into that, and I want to give him some uh, kudos for that as well. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, that concludes my report. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate the work. Um, hopefully, everyone was able to make it. Um, it's two weeks, two weeks from today? Yeah, two weeks from today, on May 1st. Yes. And then uh, it's May 9th. As well. That's right. Yeah, you want to see yes. about that? Yes. Uh, May 9th is the uh, Oakland County Main Street Awards. Oh, so uh, I submitted six nominations for uh, downtown Royal Oak. Um, I can send out an email letting you guys know of everything that I. I uh, submitted for in terms of uh, the nominations, um, but it's every community, Main Street community in Oakland County will be present there. Um, they'll have their awards, and uh, I think it's it's uh, in the evening. I think it starts about six o'clock on May 9th. It'll be at the Strand Theater in downtown Pontiac. Uh, last year we had a, it was it was short notice. Yes, we, call sure. we had just joined. So. Yeah, we just joined. A few of us were out of town. Uh, I think three or four 
uh, showed up the ex mayor and his wife and a few other Gary. Uh, Gary. Jim Ellison. Gary, sure. Gary. Yep. So it would be nice to have a good showing for that um, from us. Um, we're, I think we're quickly emerging as the stars of the Main Street program. We'll find out more. It's a pretty nice weeks. event. I mean, it's, it's really, I to go to it's like the Academy Awards of downtown. 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 Oh, I guess you have to. Choice. Well, anyhow, okay. Uh, there's a few other items on here. Just, I don't think anything to talk about, but uh, uh, you know, we got the Royal Oak and Bloom coming up on Mother's Day, the Art of Fire on, well, the weekend of the 8th of June. Uh, the OCC agreement for the sale and license of use. You might want to at some point take a look at that. There's um, some caveats there. And then there's the Franco report for, uh, for February. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything else for the good of the... Got a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion by Director Krieger. I'll second. Second by Director Riley. Any talk? No? Okay. Vote? Aye. Okay, we're out.